Well, here's the issue. Valley Sports obviously defaulted on the contract right before opening day last year. MLB took over the Padre deal. MLB guaranteed the Padres they would get 80% of their TV rights. Uh, they got about $40 million last season. However, as part of the deal, the Padres evidently were ready to go to bankruptcy court and file a lawsuit saying that these guys, Bally, defaulted on this contract. But these guys then somehow came up with the money to be able to keep the contracts of other teams for an additional year. That's not fair to us. They defaulted on us and put us out in the street and somehow came up with the dollars for the Rangers and the Astros and the Braves, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So there was a lawsuit. Padres filed asking $162 million in damages for the way Diamond Sports and Bally were conducting the business as this thing was going into bankruptcy. They evidently went to an arbitrator. They have settled upon a price. The Padres are going to get a $10 million penalty payment from Bally. There will be another $68 million that will be paid when they go into bankruptcy, restructure, and shutter Ballet Sports San Diego. So the Padres are going to get a total of $78 million, but it's not all deliverable immediately, and we don't know when the bigger payment, the balloon payment, is going to come. They will dissolve Ballet Sports San Diego and all of its assets. I, I guess what's really incensed the Padre people is somehow Diamond in the middle of bankruptcy comes up with equity to be able to keep the Rangers and to keep the Braves, and they screwed all these other teams along the way. The one that's still out there, the next one's going to file because of what the Padres are getting is going to be Arizona because Arizona was the second one that disappeared from the Bally roster. There could be some litigation there. By the time we're going to get to the end of this coming season, there will have been 14 teams that Major League Baseball probably is going to take back, even though Diamond Sports, which oversees Bally, is trying to restructure. It's very complicated. At the end of the day, the Padres are still taking a significant financial hit to the budget. But the, I guess the thing that's really bothered everybody is, why were the Padres treated so poorly as compared to all these other teams that Ballet Diamond was scrambling to try to keep the rights for another year? That's why this litigation is still going on in bankruptcy court. Yeah, it was weird because they were, the Padres were sort of one-off, right? Like MLB was managing it and Ballet mm -hmm. was still doing the other teams. Well, they were the first one that went down then suddenly Ballet came up with the money to keep the others going. How's yeah. that possible? Yeah, and especially if they're going bankrupt. I mean, how are they coming up with the cash? I guess they're pulling it from their parent company, Diamond Sports, to be able to pay out. So this is good on the Padres. Cutsenza has got to be really excited about this. A big lump sum of money coming in, kind of help uh, appease the other uh, shareholders. Uh, but, you know, good on the Padres. Because when that Bally deal broke up, I mean, that was a punch in the nose. That's a big amount of money not to have. And they had spent that money down road with the contracts that A.J. Preller had let out. Again, that money they're getting from Diamond and Bally, that's not payable tomorrow. That might be six months from now, might be a year from now. They're still coming up short in terms of their actual media money coming in the front door. So defer payments like Otani's contract, maybe. Yeah, without uh, interest. <laughs> but I, I will say this, though. Since the Padres went to the new broadcast system, I miss the the pregame post came in studio that they had with Pomeranz and, and Sweeney, you know, now it just feels very disjointed that like the few, few, maybe 10 minutes before the game starts. Yeah. It's, it's been streamlined radically. It's been streamlined because of economics. Uh, I think, I think it's hurt the content, but you know, there's ways to do things differently. You know, if you got your, if you're paying Pomeranz and I had, this, I had, this as another topic another day, but we'll just touch it quickly. If you're paying Pomeranz, let him do third, sixth, and eighth inning scoreboard updates. He's at yeah, the stadium, he's in the studio. There's no reason you cannot do an insertion in between innings, scoreboard updates, third, sixth, and eighth innings. Mm -hmm. Give the fans more than just Orsillo and Mud talking baseball, laughing, and hijinks. Let's get some more content in there. You got Scanlon, use him more often. You're paying these people. Let's make it a maybe it's going to be a different broadcast, but make it a more depth content broadcast. That's one man's opinion. Well, do you did you watch the broadcast where they had the umpire in the booth? Yeah, and that was fun. That's a one time, one time, one off thing. Yeah, as a one off thing, I think it was fine. Um, but even like you know the, the young lady that is now the host. I mean, they, I don't know why did they switch out Annie Heilbrunn and brought in this. Uh, she used to be with the Yankees, I think, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't get it. I mean, the way they're shuffling these things around because. It wasn't broke. It was working before, you know? I am all about 
content. That's why we have 11 topics today, right? Yes, right. I'm all about content on the Pottery Broadcast. It's more than balls and strikes and, and Donnie O and Mud talking. You're paying all these other people. Create some content. Let's do more for me. Wait, or well, you. you well, you should roll into the booth yourself with all your content. You should be doing the, the scoreboard updates. If I were king. All right, let's go. We got two other big.